Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And it's been a very, very long time since I've talked about Alliance Block, aka ALBT. And uh yeah, so let's just uh let's just dive into it. Um so first off, this thing is at some pretty significant lows. Um, as uh, as we really kind of look at where we are trading at now, so you can see on my screen the dotted red line, and that is where we are currently trading at right now. And if we go all the way back here to 2020, you could see these two candle wicks. They're the two green ones. We are on that level right now. It's almost like four and a half cents. Now we have wicked down in the past. Uh, here's a candle wick. This is on the daily span from October 8th, 2020. We wicked all the way down to about roughly two and a half cents, like around that range. Insane. We recently, if we come over here real quick, uh, we came down to the lowest point that we came down to uh, so far on this chart was about three and a half cents, like right around that same range. Um, it's interesting. It really is interesting. Um, I think that this is a token that's extremely oversold. Uh, there's not a lot of volume in. There's not a lot of exchanges. Honestly, like the, the only major exchange that has this listed is Qcoin. Um, so I, I understand the lack of volume and a lot of tokens that are not majorly listed will get hurt the most during the bear market. This thing is extremely oversold um, and is one of my largest bets from 2021. And uh, it did make me a significant amount of money. And I think that it's going to again um, from here to the all time high is roughly about a 30x opportunity which i feel very confident about uh and anything after that i mean it's it's a very significant high um we've been looking at the macro fib extensions as well uh just going off of the low that we have down there uh some of these highs are significant we've been looking at that six dollar range up there for a little bit of time uh, just to give you guys a quick insight at that six dollar range this would be the four six one eight the highest outreach usually that we see on most charts it would be like a 137 X opportunity right around like 135 or so. Uh, now, if you wanted to be a little bit more conservative, that's totally fine. The 1618 is a perfect area as well. This would be about a 46 X opportunity, almost a 50 X from the level that we are at now going off these bottoms down here. Well, you're looking at at just the $2 range, uh, the 1618. You are looking at about almost a 57 X opportunity at the $6 range as well, about 100 63 X now how do we get to these levels uh, well first off we need to have some major significant listings we need some very strong exchanges and we need a lot more volume and hype around ALBT there's really not a lot of volume into ALBT as you guys do see the unbalanced volume is uh, still ranging around the same level that we've seen going all the way back to June of 2021 as well as July of 2021 so um, on balance volume has been increasing though since June which is great. We still started to fall back here uh, and make a new low in September. And uh, we recently retested it back in October. I would love to see a triple bottom bounce. That would be great. But it looks like we already had our double bottom bounce. So we might just make um, a higher low and continue this higher low that we already kind of seen. I mean, we came down to test. Uh, let me see what price that was. So yeah, we well, we didn't even have the double uh, bottom bounce. We had you know, almost, uh, it, it, it's kind of crazy because we just had this slight wick, make a nice little bottom level, have this nice upside tick, which was still significant resistance against the 50 daily uh, EMA. And then we rejected off of it and uh, made a new low. And now we have this higher low, uh, which is not anything crazy. We don't have a lot of support range here. Uh, it might go off of the candle wick here from September 3rd. Um, but as long as we kind of sustain here, kind of trade sideways and start to break out above the EMAs and gain some momentum, 
that would be greatly appreciated. I think that that would be awesome to see as well um, because we still right now are in a, an accumulation zone. I mean, like this has been an accumulation zone since going all the way back to June um, and we're actually below the accumulation zone. I mean, this is like five and a half cents. I have been buying at around five and a half cents down to roughly this range down here. I didn't buy the exact bottom. It was around like four cents. So anywhere between like four and four and a half cents uh, to me has been a perfect area to look at and uh, I do think that the upside is going to be significant. Why? Well, let's actually look at what Alliance Block is actually doing and and let's look at the recent announcements. So one, Alliance Block, we are founding partners of the new crypto and digital assets program created by Plug and Play TC in Silicon Valley. The other founding members, you won't believe this, include Visa, INX, IGT, and FTI. These are significant names in the game. And uh, we even do see Tokenizer over here talking about this huge opportunity. So we do see that Visa, largest card network, as you guys are probably all aware of, um, F Tem uh, Templeton, top asset management firm, uh, ALBT, CFI, DeFi platform, and we do see INX, security tokens, IGT, gaming leader. These are some of the high tier names that are behind this, and it's crazy that they are working with Alliance Block. Again, like this kind of solidifies how large Alliance Block actually is as a player. All because their token is, uh, you know, not astronomically high, and you know it's out on major exchanges, all this kind of stuff does not mean that the token sucks or anything like that. I, I've, th I've seen a lot of people say like, you know, if Hedera is doing so well, why is their token down? Like most of this market is absolutely decimated, especially with the recent things happening with FTX. I would argue that, um, you know, recently as we started to break out here back here in October, uh, we were ranging to break out of the 200 daily EMA and get back into this demand channel um, up here. Or even, I mean, realistically speaking, we were trying to flip this... Uh, demand range going all the way back to May, which was at eight and almost like a half cents. Uh, would have loved to see it continue to ride up and, you know, regain its summer lows back here to like 17 and a half cents. That would have been incredible. But again, the market kind of did a turn with the FTX situation. A lot of FUD was in the market and everything started to go down from there. Um, but in my opinion, the, the Alliance Block token itself, um, just doesn't have a lot of exposure yet and we've seen this a lot with early gems like even Q&T early on did not have a lot of exposure um H bar again we have to wait to see all these tokens really kind of be listed out but we do see a little bit of what's going to be happening around this so they are leading innovation platform connecting startups uh corporations VC firms uh universities and even government agencies headquartered in Silicon Valley they offer innovation uh programs and help partners in every stage of their journey and um, it seems like there has been a significant amount of individuals talking from financial institutions to corporate leaders and even startups. I think that this is great. I think that this is incredible. And I love to see Alliance Block continue to build out. They've been building for a very long time. We've been watching it and it's very exciting. Then over here, we also do see Alliance Block's co-founder and CTO uh, highlights the importance of transparency in DeFi and why it's necessary to think about the focus on self-regulation. And he did kind of go on uh, to mention a few things around this space and why, you know, regulations could be good, but also why regulations could be bad. Uh, Mika is the big bill that was, um, you know, a major reaction, but thankfully DeFi and DAOs are exempt from it. If we continue to allow collapses like this in an industry without a proactive stance, we will surely see see a stronger reaction potentially including DeFi and DAOs and yeah I mean if we do see that then uh, we could definitely see DeFi being targeted and pro possibly even killed and um, I think that Alliance Block is definitely focused on a lot of this even with their trustless identity verification protocol it uh, or sorry with Alliance Block's uh, trustless identity verification protocol projects will have access to a tool set to start the road to participation in self-regulation and it will allow for them to have that regulatory uh, balance behind them which could promote DeFi growth and actually help DeFi continue to expand and we even do see like exchanges centralized and decentralized and protocols need to be transparent it's our duty as users and or community members to demand transparency of what happens with the tokens we trust them with and stay away from those that refrain from providing this transparency the recent release of Alliance Block's TIDV uh, solution provides a practical tool set that will lead the industry towards self-regulation. I think that this is great, and I, I really do think that's going to be innovative around DeFi. Again, DeFi is a market that has started to drop significantly in value and interest because of the bear market. And we do see uh, that the CEO and founder of Alliance Block was recently asked to comment on the current state of DeFi and what is needed by the wider industry to elevate it to the 
full potential. And uh, we do see this year has been or has seen some of the giants at crypto face serious problems and some cease to exist. This week, the third largest centralized exchange, FTX, has been the latest victim. Uh, this follows Terra Money as well as Celsius Network and Three Arrows Capital. This proves that there is inherent cha challenges and problems in blockchain and DeFi. But it is DeFi the technology or could it be some of the players involved? NASDAQ um, asked just a few questions. Every bear market is a learning experience, and this one is no different. What lessons have we learned this year? The lesson out of this uh, difficult year is DeFi is that it's not the technology that is the problem. It is not the users that are the problem, but some of the players that are the problem. I couldn't agree more. Uh, so we need a solution that uses identity, privacy, compliance, and regulation to ensure that DeFi continues to grow to its full potential while making sure that the players are playing fairly and our solutions have the user's welfare at the forefront. And um, this is where they do plug, of course, the TIDV. I think that the TIDV is definitely going to continue to grow uh, the DeFi sector. Remember, I've always said that this is a huge opportunity for Alliance Block to focus on DeFi as well as, you know, trying to bridge out this entire industry to the stock exchanges. Uh, we do see over here from Orwell um, Huxley 69, Alliance Block is on the path to disrupt the $100 trillion securities market with its state of the art and globally compliant decentralized capital market. The London Stock Exchange did post this. And uh, yes, this is very large. We've been focused on this for a while. Um, it's centered around tokenization, DeFi solutions within lending, insurance, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a large amount of things that they are doing, and I think that's in part with their entire ecosystem that they are continuously expanding on. As you guys do see here, they're focused on some of the largest things around traditional finance and trying to be that bridge to DeFi, really kind of having these two areas converge. And they do focus on all of the things around legality issues, compliance, regulatory, you know, frameworks, things like that, which I think is great. And all of the major partnerships, like a lot of people will like say, like, well, what's the difference between Alliance Block and this project? Like, why do you like Alliance Block? Don't you think that, you know, Alliance Block is this, that? Like, the reason why I focused on Alliance Block early on and I really kind of paid attention to it when it was at some nice lows did i get in at the best prices no absolutely not full transparency wise i will talk to you guys about where i got into um alliance block at it was actually during the summer of 2021 i was able to grab it at around like 20 to 25 cents we didn't buy a massive amount, but we still made a decent amount of money off of Alliance Block. It was one of my biggest players during that time, ROI-wise, uh, because again, you know, most of our ROI came from uh, previously into 2020, into 2021, sort of, uh, like the Graph Token was a big one. Matic was also a huge one as well. Uh, but Alliance Block was also a big player there. I mean, Alliance Block was one of my biggest summer wins and we didn't have like a, a massive opportunity with a lot of the summer wins because we're still kind of holding some of them that we did accumulate uh, like Casper is one that we've been continuously accumulating Q and T another one uh, so a lot of those did not get sold off or anything like that and Alliance Block is one that I have taken quite a bit of profits on uh, once I seen a tip over like a dollar plus I was like okay it's time to de-risk a bit um, but we bought around like 20 to 25 cents. The reason why is because at that time we were holding Q&T, we were holding HBAR, we were holding a ton of other tokens as well, and uh, even Matic, and look at the names that were on here. So you've seen a lot of the partnerships. Again, also, um, we love to see Energy Web Token there, uh, Quant, an another one, like all of the major you know projects that I was holding during that time uh, were partnered with Alliance Block. And I was like, all right, yeah, this thing's going to be huge. And then I did a lot of deep diving into it. I read the white paper. I read everything around it. The tokenomics looked great. A lot of people think that the tokenomics are actually bad. I don't believe so. Again, I read the white paper fully around tokenomics and all that kind of stuff, especially around like releases. I really do think that Alliance Block is going to surprise a lot of people. I, I, I think that's going to play a vital role to the DeFi space. Uh, even if you go over to their roadmap, their roadmap is fully uh, designed out. Uh, we could actually check down here in 2022. So right now we are at the end of 2022. So here you guys have a lot of the things that they are working on currently. Uh, you see a lot of the other projects up here or uh, areas up here that they have already kind of done. Like you can click a lot of this and it will open up to the page of the update that they did. Uh, and they are very transparent on all of that. Some of this is not fully built out and live yet. Uh, but most of this stuff, if you scroll, so there's a key up here that you can look at. So product development. So a lot of the stuff that is in yellow is still in development. But most of this stuff, like you could click here and see everything around it. Uh, and they're very transparent on everything um, around the roadmap, which I love to see. Now, again, like this is not me trying to do a deep dive breakdown on... Um, 
you know, alliance block or anything like that. I just think that when we look at DeFi, when we look at the issues around the space, how do we get to peak mass adoption? Well, we need regulatory frameworks in, in mind. And I think that bridging between traditional finance and DeFi and even CeFi itself is going to be a big role. And it's a large opportunity as well. Like you're looking at hundreds of trillions of dollars. And I do think that alliance block is going to play a vital role within that space. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, happy to you all have a beautiful day, beautiful night. If you guys are on this before, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.